Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, we're talking about the future of esports, and with me today is Ari Fox. Welcome, Ari. Uh, thanks for having me again, Catherine. I'm very happy to be here. Aloha to all the people in Hawaii uh, from the East Coast. Terrific. And if we have, hear a dog barking, well, that's just part of the way things work these days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, they want to be part of the world, you know, it's hard to just keep them shut out, you know, right. people, bring, people bring a people, trust me, after COVID's over, people will be bringing their dogs to work because <laughs> they can't stay at home anymore by themselves because they're so used to having their, you know, their, their human companions with them 24 seven, it'll be like, where are you going? No, you got to take me with you. I'm going to work with you today. Sure. Well, you know, it was, you know, I had so much fun, Ari, uh, being on a panel at the Casino Esports Conference. Um, and we did it in a really fun way. Uh, we couldn't get together. So we actually had a 3D conference. Uh, how did it go, Ari? All, all I got uh, after the event was so much um, excitement, so much happiness, so much joy. And you know, in, in days like now, this that's the best thing to get as feedback from uh, running an event like what we did. We took a risk um, and what we did was we had multiple orientation sessions prior to the actual event where we trained, you know, sometimes 20 people at once on how to use the platform. And really what it was, was uh, it, we worked with a company called GamerJibe and they are game developers and they created avatars where you would pull, where you uh, drop into an environment and you could meet and talk and network. Everything that we did in the event, we liked when we first saw it, and everything that happened in the event lended itself to everything you can do in person except for actually being in person. Okay. And I think that was the most exciting part of it. And I think that's why it was such a great hit because I mean, if you go to other events today, you go to virtual events today, it's just a website with some Zoom calls and uh, it's just not as engaging. Yeah, this was way more fun. Let's uh, look at the video coming into the Welcome Center and you can uh, tell us what we're seeing. Sure. So this is the Welcome Center like you would see if you dropped into like any Welcome Center that was actually in person. Uh, there's a uh, reception desk where you could pick a hat, uh, wear a hat, you know, get a mask. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And in that Welcome Center, you know, you can go up to anybody there and click on their avatar, have a private conversation. So to the right, you'll see that's a list of all the people that were in the Welcome Center area. Um, and the way that the design is, it's just so well done. Um, there are glitches here and there, but I mean, the concept behind what it was, was that we really wanted to do something different than just have you know a, a website where you're clicking on links and trying to find somebody in this virtual, uh, what they call virtual, we didn't even call it virtual, but the, in these virtual conferences. And then you are just sitting through a Zoom call. And what we wanted to do is really engage our audience, really engage the attendees as if they were out there. And that's exactly what that is. You see avatars walking around, with the names above their heads. So you can identify anybody that you want just by their name, if you know who they were, or you just click on them and then a whole litany in the upper right-hand corner comes up and you know, uh, you know, gives them, the, gives you your LinkedIn connection and everything like, did you have any private chats with anybody, Catherine? Um, I actually did and that was fantastic. And I, I connected with a few people on LinkedIn and then looked for them in private chats and had one. And let's show the photo of networking table. The, the, um, they had networking tables where if you entered a little space, then you could talk with that person privately. Right, so there you are, there's your avatar. 
Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure who that is next in, at, the, at the meeting table, but at these tables, as well as at the booth spaces, you see there's a little green aura around the, the table and the booth space. And as soon as you walk into that space, the rest of the room you, it becomes silent. So it's just you and that person um, speaking at that table. And you can have a multiple of like anywhere from, you know, two to like 10 people in the, at that table having a conversation. I mean, you were really, it's kind of hard to have a conversation with 10 people, but um, the same thing happens where there are with these features. So let's say you are sitting at that private table, you can click on your uh, camera and you can have a face-to-face -face, uh, with your personal, you know, like we're talking now. We could have a face-to-face -face conversation, but our avatars are located in in the in the area. So it's somewhere between, um, you know, actually seeing and having a face-to-face -face conversation with the actual person behind the avatar, and your avatar is just, you know, going through the exhibit, the a whole event center, like you would a regular event center, exploring, going to different booth spaces, uh, and just having a great time and. You know, this is this is the future. I we're really excited about this platform, um, and, and uh, we're working right now with uh, closely with the Gamer Jive guys because you know I put on the Casino Esport Conference, but I have a big announcement uh, that we're going to be having an international GamerCon conference that's going to feature a uh, an esports a big esports tournament uh, with prize pools and prizes and everything like that. Uh, uh, President's Day weekend, 2021. Oh. So wow. from, from February 12th to the 15th is going to be a GameCon conference and that's gonna feature indie games. It's gonna feature, um, you know, talking to the developers of those games, you know, publishers. Uh, if you're a game developer, it's a great place to go to learn about new uh, game engines, to build new, new types of games and features. Uh, and then there'll be the esports tournament itself, which will be a, a big competition. So we're real kind of excited and expecting a worldwide presence um, at that event. And so that's something we're, that we're working right now in the works. Uh, we have all of our little Excel sheets, our Google sheets set up and we're designing it and creating it. And it takes a lot of work getting involved. Actually, that's more work than the CEC, believe it or not, uh, because there's a lot of moving parts. We're gonna have a cosplay contest um, at that event. Hmm. So uh, even, will, will that also be on the Gamer Jive platform? Yeah, we're okay. working we're Great. working in partnership with Gamer Jive. Okay. So, fantastic. Yeah. So you should come to it. It'll be a lot of fun. Sure. I will. Um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, going to be. Yeah, that will be fun. It, so it's just, it's really, you know, times today are so like, you know, dark. And, you know, <laughs> I, I there have been a lot of other um, uh, uh, conferences in this, this past year. And I'm talking consumer conferences, like Comic Cons and stuff like that, that have done these virtual conferences. But they haven't been uh, with the avatar aspect. They haven't been like the gamer jive thing sure, where sure. You're, you're, you're setting up an avatar, you're walking through and experiencing it. So what we liked about the gamer jive platform was it's like a game. Yeah, you're like yeah. walking through it, 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 you know, you're, you're in an environment just like you would a game, just like uh, Skyrim or, or, um, you know, Fallout or any of these games, but it's, it's, you're in a convention space. So it's great. Sure. A lot and you of know, fun. my, I have to tell you my favorite, my highlight of the conference was fishing with UN fatality. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll show the picture. Um, yeah. You know, what happened is that we, <laughs> we did our panel and I was telling fatality that he was talking about this area where you could go fish. And I said, I hadn't found it yet. So he said he would show it to me. So his avatar was leading my avatar throughout the whole conference space out to that area. And then he goes, oh yeah, you can walk on the water. And then, you know, all of a sudden he gets a fishing pole and he's fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I had to, he had to teach me how to fish. And then you showed up and then we were all fishing. That was good fun. Well, that's, you see, that's the whole point of it. I mean, you know, when, we, when you go to an in-person conference, 
um, in real life, not on a computer, you're interacting with people in different ways. And what I loved about the Gamer Jive platform was that, that, okay, so you can't go to an actual bar with that with your friends and drink and have a good time and, and crack jokes, but you could go to this virtual fishing hole and catch some fish and just talk about stuff and hang out and socialize. And I think that's what I loved so much about the Gamer Jive platform was that it was, and that's why we're going to do the GamerCon thing, because right. this is really going to build, this is going to take the, the actual conference experience by gamers to come to a conference, to explore uh, an exhibit floor, just like they would a regular in-person you know, conference, walk the floor, talk to merchants, buy their merchandise, uh, go talk to game developers, play different games, enter into a tournament, play in the, game, in the video gaming tournament. And no one's done this yet this year, which is surprising to me, but right. um, we're, we're, we're so excited that we're we we're now we're now moving forward with another project that'll be in February. So right. we're we're very very excited about that, and I think that's going to be a, a lot of fun. And I expect that after the event, just like I got, I'm getting all this extremely positive feedback from everybody that was at the CEC. That I'll get that same feedback from all the attendees that come. And we're not going to charge but a lot of money, you know, maybe five ten bucks to come in, have a good time, you know talk to your friend that you haven't seen because of COVID that lives, you know, a few states over that you would normally meet at an actual convention. And now you can meet them in an avatar form. Sure. And one of my favorite things aside from fishing was dancing. And so we'll <laughs> throw the dance video and talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I knew that, see, there I am wearing that white hat. I think that's me, yeah. um, if I got the right person there. Anyway, mm -hmm. so this was a time when a bunch of us had gone on the dance floor. <laughs> right. And everybody had a lot of drink to drink, too. And you could dance without dropping a, a drop of your drink. Look, at the, look at the moves. Yeah, I know. And it was the only time that I could dance that well. Like, my break dancing is, has um, improved quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's extremely a lot of bit. At least your avatar is like an amazing dancer. Like right, right. Else. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's the thing. You know, here's another thing that you know you could go. And we had we also had a virtual bar. Obviously, that's where everybody got the drinks. But the idea is that um, you know you could go have fun. You know, laugh at the moves that your avatar is making. You know, I think for the uh, for the GameCon event, we're going to add a few more little things here and there uh that might be a lot more fun i think i think fatality would like that because i mean as a professional gamer uh you know uh he'd probably enjoy that kind of thing and that kind of experience i know i know most gamers would but yeah. it's almost it's almost like a game within a game because gamecon right. gonna we're setting up this gaming environment convention that's going to have games in it sure. that are that are built by developers yeah, and you know, Fatality is going to be on my show on November 11th. And had we not been fishing together, I probably wouldn't have had that opportunity to ask him. Um, right. Now I'll show, we'll show the picture of the panel that I did. Um, because, you know, what's interesting is even though we had this 3D environment with fishing and dancing and getting drinks and walking around and networking, we still had a environment for, uh, you know, talking just as we are today in a kind of, and that was on um, Twitch, right? Right. It was streamed over a, a, a platform called StreamYard, um, and which is a production type of, uh, um, much more lends itself to more of a studio production type of software online, um, StreamYard, and then we broadcasted it live over Twitch. Okay, yeah. So that picture yeah. isn't coming up, but um, but anyway, uh, but, yeah. So it was just our panel talking, just as if we were talking today. Right. And what I liked about there is what I liked about this. Jay Moses from uh, Take Two Media. Uh, you know, those are guys that are behind uh, the NBA Two K. And then you have Dr. Leila Mintas and the other guys there that were from. Again, one guy was from EA, but um, you know. What, what, what you really, uh, what was nice about that 
was that um, because you could network so much and so well in the environment as an avatar, have these private conversations, it made it a lot more um, cozier when we were able to talk and have the panels on, the, on, on stream. And what I really liked about the StreamYard platform was that during the times where you're dancing on a dance floor or you're even having a private conversation and you're in the space, there was an overlay um, that was inside that was live um, on the GamerJive platform that was sort of like this like uh, window in the lower left-hand corner where you could actually see the actual talks there too. So if you couldn't obviously get into the presentation room, didn't matter because the talks were on an overlay over the entire event. So no matter where you were in the event space, you could see the talks. Yeah, and let's show the picture of the presentation room. Um, yeah, this yeah. is this is from looking at it um, from one angle. Um, but if you entered in, you would see it from another angle. Yeah, the, how about those doors that you like go through the right, right, like right. beam you in and beam you out? It was really <laughs> much like being in Star Trek, but it was fun. Yeah, yeah, and it does require a little bit of work to learn how to do it. I think if um, a lot of people caught on very quickly, I needed a little extra help. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got a set, uh, one of my business manager, he's 76 years old, I got him to use the platform. I mean, he didn't want to actually be at the, you know, he didn't come to the event. I think he dropped in for a minute. But, you know, once you get a hold of, of, of utilizing the keyboard and the arrow keys to move your avatar forward and stuff, it really works the same way as it would if you were playing a video game. Um, I mean, you use the arrow keys if you played uh, PUBG or Fortnite, if you're playing that online. Um, so, it, it, you know, and then the shift key to run and, and, the, and the space key to jump. Uh, and then once you get the commands probably, you know, and, and all of that stuff down, it's a lot of fun. It's just sure. a lot of fun. So sure. much more fun. And so like, so when I actually took the time and we were doing classes and courses before the actual event, um, you know, I think one time we had about 50 people on, uh, we would join in Google chat. That's where we'd start Google Hangouts. Everybody connects on Google Hangouts because everyone just knows how to click a, a link and go to that link. And then I had to teach them on how to finally to register. And then finally, when they dropped in as the avatar, it took a lot of patience, but it was, I enjoyed yeah. it. I really yeah. did enjoy it. It was fun. And I loved so one of the things I like to do, I'm a very passionate person, as you know, Catherine, and I want to give my, you know, my experience and how I think this experience bettered our world. I mean, it right. bettered our world. I mean, that's, that's the idea behind video gaming. I mean, when I first started getting involved in the video gaming world, um, and then esports aside, esports is, is the competitive side, but I see gaming as a way to improve our ability to connect, to relate, to uh, to, and that and that also spills over to esports because as esports grows, you know you have camaraderie. So right. you know you, you now have people who like that same team, who like sure. the phase, who like Phase Clan, or like uh, San Francisco Shock, or one of those teams. And, and it's just it's just like anything else. Well, who who's your favorite team? Oh, I'm a Yankee fan. Oh, you're a Yankee fan? Oh, I'm a Met fan, you know, or, you know, I like the Padres. So it's like people collectively can, can, can you know, band together and talk about how great the esports tournament was at GameCon, which is going to be in February. So, you know, and, and, or, or how great the League of Legends teams are, you know, the League of Legends League is, or anything like that, or the Overwatch finals or anything. So this is where gaming becomes in so many aspects, and I see it also in, uh, you know, younger kids, younger people take to gaming because it's part of their culture. Sure. So sure. how, uh, you know, the biggest fail, I think right now in, 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 in pandemic, the biggest fail is that they were not ready to teach kids from every level, from kindergarten, pre-K, all the way through uh, the end of uh, undergrad and college to be able to teach them through games. Right if, they, right. if they if they could teach through gaming, I think we'd have a, a very different conversation about. I mean, because you know, my kids are taking online courses now for college, and it's, they're just series and over series of series of Zoom calls. 
Right, right. And, and these kids, as, as I expressed to so many people before they came to the CEC, a Zoom call conference is like, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm gonna date myself, but you remember the movie Airplane, right? Sure. Okay, so you remember the guy, Stryker, and he's on the plane, he's telling everybody his life story. And anyone that's sitting next to him is like one guy's pouring gasoline on himself and he wants to light himself on fire. Everybody's trying to commit suicide next to him. I mean, it's not politically correct today, but I mean, it's it's like, that's right. what Zoom calls are like. Yeah, People yeah. Are so yeah. they're so Zoomed <laughs> out, you know? Right, right. And it was different, like to do, to actually be at an event where we actually got to physically be there with an avatar. We got to do things like jump and run around this conference and dance and fish and do fun things with people. And we hadn't gotten to do that. And even though it was our avatar, it was still doing it. Yeah. You know? And so anyway, well, what, Besides this excitement in this new environment for a um, conference, what other, um, what else do you see as a future of evil? Well, well, that's how, that is, I think we see that future. I mean, right now, let's look at, let's look at what's happening. And, you know, you recently posted that article about Riot and how they're letting go of those people in Australia um, because of the, you know, the League of Legends uh, uh, league there. Um, just didn't have enough, uh, you know, didn't have enough, they couldn't do events. They couldn't have in-person events in auditoriums. Now imagine for a second, now what is the, what is the, what is the overall concept behind that? And why does that work? But now during COVID, people can't really go to the stadiums to see these esports tournaments because it's too, it's too dangerous. People could get sick. So right. Think of it for a second. If we took the platform that I used for the Casino Esport Conference, set everyone up as an avatar form, and they went together, they met in, in the virtual space as an avatar where they could have private conversations, they can have group conversations with their friends, and they could be watching a League of Legends tournament at the same time. Right. That's the future. And you know, you know, our minds are very complicated. But if we can, if you gather the same type of sociability as we experienced during the Gamer Jive Casino Esport Conference there, so could gamers, if you could think for a second, that you created a tournament within that platform. Right. So, and, and, I, and this should really be used for colleges. So there's not that, that, that kind of thing. I mean, think about it for a moment. I mean, you know, I think the teacher who's ever teaching the class obviously should um, make sure that they're not students having private conversations because you know, right, right. But so they should have some kind of like network on their screen that they can see who's having a private conversation or not. Yeah, but right. but I think that you know there's a lot of ways to adapt this platform and us being the experimental guinea pigs for this. I think that. It went off without a hitch. I was very excited about it. I see so many more applications that this could be utilized for esports and everything else uh, right, that right. what we have right now. And, and and let's say we do have start having it, um, you know, esport tournaments in person, and COVID's not such an issue. Pandemic has then become you know something of the past. Why not be able to let people come in, you know, in this platform? as well as come in person. Right, so, right, absolutely. So, yeah, so I yeah. think there's there's a lot to it that, um, I mean, as I saw this, this is the first step before we get to Ready Player One, the movie. Right, 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 exactly. Well, you know, what we are, what we're doing is we're expanding the opportunities for doing business and connecting with people all over the world. I mean, certainly not everyone can travel to Vegas or travel to New York or, or Hawaii or wherever anyone's putting on a conference. And this does bring those opportunities to life. And it also, I, you know, I see what you're saying, Ari, in terms of how, how um, kind of two dimensional the education process is in, um, 
you know, and that bringing this 3D concept would make it make people more engaged, right? More engaged in learning. So, right. Because your socialization is still there. You, you, outside the actual Zoom talks, you're now going to the fishing hole. You're mm -hmm. now going to the dance floor. You're now getting a hat. You're now ex having private conversations. You're now going to, uh, you know, a virtual bar, you know, and we can add other things besides this. I don't know, uh, a vert, you know, some kind of like a basketball game, pick up a right. basketball game. Right, you know, right. Something where there is this ability to socialize. Now, what it, what is that at the at, at its core? That at its core is the socialization of, of video gaming. I mean, this is why video gaming with younger adults has become such a cultural phenomenon. And the reason is because they have been able, because of the internet now, to actually connect with one another and socialize over this medium over the video gaming medium. So think for a moment, if you said that you know, you watch these streamers like Dr. Disrespect and guys like Fatality who have their own shows and stuff will be on your show in November. But I mean, they go into a game and they find their friends within that game and they have a commonality of connecting with one another for a certain goal and they're having fun. And that's that's the thing. They're they're doing something social, which is you know they're they're fighting another team in fatalities uh, situation, or you know they're trying to win a game together. And that's something I think that they're doing. And and you know uh, you know aging myself again, this is something that you and I would have done if we said let's grab a bunch of our friends. We'll get ten friends or twelve friends. And let's go down to the local high school and play football on the right, football right, field. Right. But it's that connection that you're getting now on a digital platform. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, Ari, I'm really looking forward to Gamecon uh, next year. And uh, I'm sure you'll be busy putting something fantastic together. We're um, very excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so much for being here today. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, next week, my guest will be Hawaii State Senator Glenn Waikai. We'll discuss how Hawaii can capitalize on the growing esports economy. See you then. Take care, aloha. <laughs>